At a press briefing with South Carolina Governor Henry McMaster, Senator Lindsey Graham slammed President Biden and Democrats over the Inflation Reduction Act. Graham said that this legislation was, quote, a bridge too far. This was too much. Democratic lawmakers and President Biden alike have touted the legislation as a solution to combat 40-year high inflation. Republicans, including Graham, have argued that the act won't actually help bring down prices. According to the Congressional Budget Office, a federal agency that provides budget and economic information to Congress, the bill would barely make a dent on inflation in the near term and could even nudge it upward. Uh, thank you, Governor. Last time we were here, we were talking about H.R. 1, which was a federal government attempt to take over state elections. Every time I turn around, our liberal friends are trying to grab more power increase more taxes, expand the role of the federal government in every phase of our life, from taking over elections now to basically increasing the IRS so that it is literally an army, $45 billion in new energy taxes on energy production in America. In America at a time, we we're having extraordinarily high gas prices. So I appreciate you taking a stand, and I would just urge South Carolinians to check this bill out and ask those running for office, where do you stand? Joe Cunningham, where do you stand? Are you for the IRS Army? If you are, say so. If you're against it, say so. Are you for a new gas tax? If you are, say so. If not, say I'm not. So every Republican governor voted no. Every type of Republican voted no because we saw the damage being done. We've lived through this in 2021 with the American Rescue Plan, which became the American Recession Plan. And this is not an inflation reduction plan, it is grow the government plan. And I'm hoping that uh, South Carolinians are paying attention to what we're doing in Washington because it does affect us here at home. And I can promise you this will affect South Carolina's ability to maintain a strong economy. And I hope people running for office in the state will take a stand one way or the other. To take a pass on this is not fair. So I hope Joe Cunningham and others running for office on the Democratic side will speak up one way or the other. Questions? Senior correspondent, Sean Hadcox. So is there anything in the plan that you would support? For example, the ability for the federal government to negotiate on Medicare Part D is one thing that's supposed to be saving more money in the state. Well, uh, it's price fixing. There's 10 drugs that Medicare is going to be limited in terms of what they can charge for Medicare. Well, guess what? Uh, those of us not on Medicare are going to be paying higher prices. All the drugs that led to COVID virtually that worked came from the United States. Yeah, I'm sure there's something in this bill I could agree to. I have voted with my Democratic colleagues on a bipartisan infrastructure plan. I voted on a, a plan to help the issue of uh, people, unstable people with guns. I voted for the CHIPS Act. It's very expensive, but I felt like we needed to produce chips in America that go into cars and refrigerators and F-35s. It's not like I'm unable to work with my colleagues on the other side, but like every other Republican, this was a bridge too far. This was too much. This was done on a party line vote at a time when many of us would be willing to find common ground why did they do this? Because they could. I am begging the people of this country in November, fire this crowd before it's too late. They deserve to be fired. They don't know what they're doing on the economy. In March 2021, they promised us, if you pass the American Rescue Plan, as Senator Schumer said, the economy could double. Vice President Harris said, help is on the way. We went from 2.6% inflation to 9% because they flooded the zone with federal money and federal tax increases, and it created the nightmare we have today. You know, if you're a football team, you need to have more than one play. Tax and spend is the only play they got in their entire playbook. So I'm betting and hoping and praying that when the word gets out about this inflationary bill, that it doesn't reduce inflation, it adds, adds prices in the energy sector, it's going to de-incentivize investment at a time we need more of it, it's gonna create an army of IRS agents that are gonna make it 
more difficult for small businesses and people to, to manage their lives in this country. Who do you think this army is going to come after? i tell you who they're going to come after. They're going to come after working Americans. And this is ridiculous. This shows you their priorities. In the democratic world, we're short of IRS agents. In my world, we're short of cops. We're short of Border Patrol agents. We're short of people in the military. So, yeah, there are things in this bill maybe I could support, but the bill wasn't written that way. It wasn't written to get my support. It was written to run over me. And I'm hoping somebody in the House on the Democratic side will see this differently. Senator Graham, what's the Republican plan for reducing inflation? The public plan for reducing inflation is stop spending in Washington, increase incentives in the private sector to grow. So what happened here? The last thing you want to do in terms of domestic oil production is throw a wet blanket over it. Why do we want to be, you know, I believe climate change is real, but that's no reason to destroy our economy. So our plan is not to increase taxes on energy production in America. Our plan would be to make it easier to extract fossil fuels that we own here to be less dependent on foreign oil, buying oil from people who hate our guts. Our plan would be to keep the tax cuts that we had in 2017 in place, not to do away with expensing. Expensing allows people to grow their business. It really did work. Our plan is to put a halt on government spending and taxes, and our plan is not to double the size of the IRS. What we did in 2017 worked. We had the strongest economy in my lifetime. Every element of America was doing well. African-American, Hispanic families were receiving um, benefits from the growing economy as, as much as any time in American history, and along comes COVID. And you know what? We came out of COVID in South Carolina, thanks to our governor, and now this bill is going to take us backwards. We're 90 days before an election. The FBI sent agents to the home of a former president, the leading contender to be the nominee for 2024, and I want to know why. I said two things. Nobody's above the law, but the law needs to be above politics. So if you're a Republican conservative and you hear the FBI is going after Trump again, it sounds alarm bells. This is the same organization that obtained warrants against Corner Carter Page in the Russian investigation that were so flawed the court rebuked the Department of Justice. This is the same FBI that had agents in charge of investigations of Trump that ignored every exculpatory matter and assumed the worst. The question is, was this necessary? Did they work with the Trump family and organization in a fashion to avoid having to do the raid. I don't know, but here's what I do know. I know doing this 90 days before an election reeks of politics. I know this is a dangerous precedent to set. Uh, and at the end of the day, there's a tremendous burden on the Department of Justice, in my view, to explain their actions, and I hope they will. I talked to the President just about an hour ago with Henry. The one thing I can tell you is that I believed he was gonna run before, I'm as stronger in my belief now. Every Republican I've talked to, my phone has been lit up. What the hell are these people doing? Can you imagine if this, the roles were reversed here? This happened in the Trump world against a prominent Democrat. So the bottom line here is there's a lot of accountability to be had in the past. The person who altered the warrant application, the lawyer received a one year probationary sentence is back to practicing law. So yeah, I'm very worried that the politics of the past may have risen their head again, but time will tell. Senator Graham, when is the appropriate time to do some type of action like this? Director Comey on, in October 2016 released a statement about investigating more of the Trump emails. So when's the appropriate Well, I, I would say that you don't do things before election unless you have to. And I wanna know what, you know, what led to this. I think every Republican believes that the FBI, when it comes to Trump and other organizations, have lost their mind. That the FBI protects us against child pornography, against terrorism, against crime. My 
problem is not with the FBI writ large, but I have lived through this. I have seen the Mueller investigation and their work product, and what I saw was a system trying to get somebody no matter what the evidence told them. I can promise you every stop sign that was there was ran in the Mueller investigation and Crossfire Hurricane, that the FBI analyst in charge of collecting information to prepare the warrant application is also in charge of the Hunter Biden investigation. So yeah, I'm concerned, I'm worried, and I think we need answers in an appropriate fashion. Uh, yeah, one Biden is Trump. Yeah. <laughs> well, nobody reimbursed them when uh, gas prices were down to uh, when it cost, when a barrel of oil was negative. I believe in the market. I believe that this is a commodity that when we were shut down during COVID, guess what? Gas prices went down because nobody could get out of their house. So the bottom line here is this is an attempt by liberal Democrats to restrict domestic oil production at a time we need more of it. Their solution is to go after business. My solution is to incentivize business. To the American oil companies out there, do your job. I am glad you're able to find oil and gas that we own so we can use it here and not buy it from people who hate our guts. So this idea of price fixing and taxing people based on a commodity changing one way or the other will not help us. If you are tired of paying high gas prices, you should be opposed to this bill because it creates a new gas, new gas tax. If you're tired of the federal government restricting the ability of the U.S. economy to grow, you should be against this bill. And you should be for somebody like Henry McMaster that can show you how to grow an economy.